All right, hi everybody. So today we're gonna to be showing you how to um, go on Neopod. I, my volunteers aren't here, so they didn't come in. Let me just check my messages because I had some volunteers to play it live. And um, I don't see any messages from them. So I don't think that my volunteers are showing up. But today it doesn't matter if anybody is watching this and they want to play live. Here, we'll do it this way. If you want to come on camera, you can go in to this link here. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the link on YouTube. Um, you just cl click the link and it'll put you right on camera with me. So what we're going to do today is we are going to look at this tool, this online tool. It is free. It's called Nearpod. And what Nearpod is, is it's, well, we're just going to get into it. And I'm going to show you, but it's a really cool tool that allows you to, um, teach your classes in a highly interactive and engaging way without giving the students control of your computer or your, your tablet or your classroom. And you can use this in conjunction with pretty much anything. So you can use it if you're teaching on ClassPod. You, or yeah, you could use it if you're teaching on Zoom. You can use it if you're teaching on Koala. You can use it if you're teaching on like, I don't know, like Microsoft Teams or how, wherever you teach your classes, you can use Nearpod in conjunction with it and it can make your classes highly interactive. So the link that I put in the YouTube channel, if you are on YouTube, you can see it. You can't see this link on, um, you can't see it on Facebook though. It's only going to show on YouTube. This link will allow you to pop on the camera with me and play the game with me. But as we're going on, I will give you guys all a share link. So you can all jump in the class and play the game and see how it works as a student. So either way, it's fine. <clears throat> all right. So um, Nearpod is pretty cool. I've been using it for a really long time and I don't use it for every class, but I do like to use it occasionally because it's a lot of fun. So when you go into Nearpod, this is what you're going to see. You see a lot of things that have like this little... Um, star shield on it. And I'm not entirely sure if you are able to gain access to that. You have to like, you have to buy a paid plan, but it's kind of like class in where they don't tell you what the paid plan consists of. So I don't know if they would allow it for an independent teacher. I haven't tried. I've everything that I'm showing you today is free and it's on the free plan. So you could see here that I have had like a whole bunch of lessons that I've taught. And my favorite thing to do are the, I love doing the virtual field trips. Um, I use this in my writing classes, but there are so many different things you could do. So when you come in here, you're going to create a lesson. And there are different things that you can add to your lesson. So if you have slides that you already want to add to your lesson, you can add those slides. You can add... PowerPoints, PDFs, audios, videos, images. Um, they can draw, you could do quizzes, you could do all that, like all different, all sorts of different things. The cool thing about it is that your students, you could either screen share it or your students can log in on their own devices. So maybe you have homework for the students. You can give them something that they can do it after class or they can do it during class. So I'll just show you really quick here. We'll go into one. If anybody wants to join in, whoops, let me share that again. If anybody wants to join in on this, I'll show you what this one looks like. Oh, um, where's my Chrome tab? Here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back here. Okay, so we're gonna go into um, a virtual reality thing. Um, I like to use these for lessons, um, for writing lessons where they have to like write description things. When you share it with your student, there's, there are two things, live participation or student paste. So you can give them a live participation code. Okay. We're in class. We're going to go on this, on this field trip. We're going to learn this, whatever you'll have quizzes or polls or whatever you can do. And I'll show you all those things, but it's live participation mode. It is while class is actually happening. So if you want to click, if you want to put this code in, whoops, 
if you were to put this code in on the app while this class is going on, you will have full control over all everything. Um, and you can see here, this is a virtual reality thing. I really like this. I like doing these mostly to do creative writing. So they have to do like descriptive writing or something. And the students will have control to be able to move around and see everything. If they have a virtual reality headset, they can actually connect it to their virtual reality headset and, um, you know, watch it like that. So down here where it says participants, it will actually show you all of your students that are signed in doing this live. So that's one thing that's pretty cool about it because you can um, have students that are, you know, doing this live on an app, on their iPad, on their phone, whatever. Okay. Now, say you taught a lesson and your students were like, oh, I really like that, or they missed it and they wanted to do it. You can also get a student paste code so that it's 29 days. It will last for 29 days and you can copy it and you can allow the students to do the lesson on their own, either for homework or maybe they missed the class or maybe they thought it was really fun and they just wanted to replay that. So those are some of the cool things about Nearpod. Now we're going to come in here and we're going to create a lesson so you can fully see all the things that you can do. So when you go to create a lesson, you are going to add content and activities. And the thing that I use most is the virtual reality field trip. Let me know in the comments here, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go on a virtual reality field trip? Because you could pretty much go anywhere. No suggestions. So I could put in here, um, oh, here, let's see what they've got here. Ooh, they've got some pretty cool things in here. So we go to New York City. We can go to Greece. I feel like I've been to a couple of these places. Maybe that's why it's showing it. Um, we can go under the sea. Do, 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 do. I'm going to make this. Hi, Chelsea. Hello, Chelsea. All right. Um, yep. Yeah, Egypt. Okay. We're going to go to Egypt. Okay. okay. So we're going to come in here and see there's an underground shelter. There, a colored canyon. Oh, that's not Egypt. That's <laughs> okay. We can go to a desert. Let's see where we're going to go. Okay. Hi, Brenda. Okay, so then you're going to save this. It's going to add it to your lesson. But wait, there's more. You don't have to just do that, right? You can add a whole bunch of different things. So you can add images, you can add videos, you can add web content, you can add a BBC video. So let's go into the BBC videos and let's see if they have anything. Um, they, they don't have anything on there. So these are these are videos that are already created. Um, and we're going to go to, you know, you, you could add whatever emperor penguins, how many people can live on planet earth? There we go. Okay. So now we've got a field trip, a BBC video. Obviously this lesson is not, um, coherent in any way because I don't have a plan for it. I'm kind of just like picking things, but if you wanted to, uh, you could add your own videos on, let me go back down in here. If they have something that is relative to what you're learning, then you could add that in there. But say you wanted to learn something and like we're doing Egypt and how many people can fit in this world doesn't fit. They don't have anything. Well, I can go over to YouTube. And it's going to pop this up like this. I can come in here and I can look up in the video library. 
Um, here, do they have anything? How to navigate the Egyptian underworld. Ooh, the Egyptian book of the dead. Okay. So they got a, like a bunch of um, videos in here. These are not BBC videos, but you can add... What, what did I have? I had the Sphinx, right? But like this one looks cooler, right? How to navigate the underworld. So what's really cool about this is when you come in here, the students will be watching the video. So you can watch the video in class. Okay. You can put activities at every like these are like comprehensive, compre reading comprehension or listening comprehension questions. So say this one, right? Let's look at this question. They already have this here. What is the duat? So is it the underworld, the heavens, right? You can change this question. You could delete this, this activity. You could delete this question. Um, you can add activity. Say you wanted to add an activity here. You can add an open-ended question or a multiple choice question. So this is pretty cool because you can actually add these in to your lessons. So we're going to save that. So um, now we have, I'm just going to take this video away because uh, it doesn't have anything to do. We're doing a lesson on Egypt now. So, all right. Now say there was nothing in there that made sense. You click on video and you can actually go into YouTube and you can search Egypt. It's going to pick up uh, YouTube videos that you can actually import into your thing. Okay. Now, what's really cool about this same thing, you can add comprehensive comprehension questions into this. And I will show you after we create this lesson, I'm going to give something. If so, if you want to go ahead and download the Nearpod app or pull up, if you're watching this on a computer, pull up nearpod.com and I'll, I'll give you the links for all of these so that you can join in and you can actually do it with us and you can see how it works. And um, if you're watching the replay, I will give you the link for the replay as well. So you can still do it. So I'm not going to add that because... Um, I've already got a video. I just wanted to show that, show you that. So I'm going to cancel that. So other activities that you can add into your lessons, you can do a simulation. These are kind of cool. So if you had something, so like none of this is going to apply to a lesson on Egypt, but you could add, say you wanted to, you know, add something for like middle school math or, you know, there's multiplication games. All of those, you can add those into your lesson. You'll have to come in here and play with this, but I'm not doing math or science, so I'm not going to do these. But these are just like interactive simulations that you can maybe, ex you know, explain a little bit better. So, you know, there's an acid-based solutions, um, like some chemistry looking stuff. Uh, uh, if you want to teach like electronics or... Um, you know, blending light or how to build an atom. There are different things in there that you can add um, to make your lesson interactive and just a lot more fun. So then you're going to go in and let's see here. There's a 3D object one, which is the same thing. None of this is going to matter, but say you're teaching like science and you're teaching animal cells or maybe you are teaching um, science and you're teaching like the body. Uh, there's different places. So maybe you want to put planets in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw the Sphinx in there because it has to do with what we're learning about. So now I've got, now I've got a field trip, a video, a 3D image. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to move the, the, 3D image up. And so you can see there's a lot of things. If you already have PowerPoint lessons and you would like to add the add your PowerPoint lessons into this, you can add your PowerPoint into PowerPoint lessons into this as well. So the kids can access your PowerPoint lessons on their own computer or on their own tablet during class. And the first time I saw this, I was like, why would they want to do that? But then I started playing with it and I'm like, okay, this is actually really, really cool, especially for the virtual reality field trips. The kids love those. It just makes class so different. You can add a multiple choice quiz, right? So I'm just going to say like,
Would you like to visit Egypt? And I'm just going to make this a yes. Oops. Or a no. And there's no wrong answer. So I'm going to select both. When you check it, it's telling you which, um, you know, which choice you would rather have. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's see what else can we do. You could do draw it so the students can draw on their iPads and it's going to show up. So like uh, draw a pyramid. Okay. And I can add a, a picture as well if I wanted to add a picture of a pyramid, but I'm not going to. So now the students will be able to draw a pyramid. You could do for the, let me go back into the draw it really quick because I failed on that one um, to show you what's really cool about that. What's really cool about that is if you're teaching your kids letters, if you're teaching your kids how to write in cursive, if you're teaching your kids, um, these are all cursive. Um, if, if you're teaching your students anything like that, you see there are, are there we go, go to alphabet. So say you're teaching your kids how to write the letter Y. You can pop that over there. It's going to show this on the screen, right? And the kids can actually trace it and then write it on their own. So this is really cool. Instead of giving all the kids the access to like play with the screen, they can do it on their own tablets and they all have as much practice time as they want to. And um, it's something that you could even do after class. If you were doing like, say you were doing like letters or cursive, you could give them an after class thing where they could continue to practice. So I'm not going to add that. I just wanted to show you that there were different options that you could do for that as well. Oh, uh, what else is there? Fill in the blank. Um, so this is really good for, and I can change my color over here if I want to. This is really good for students who are learning a language. So their, um, let's see, their parents um, are going to their, oh, oh no, 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 what do I want? Their parents are going to their house. They're really excited um to go there okay this is a very confusing sentence their parents are going to their house they're really excited to go there and it's something that people can get very confused so we're going to take out the theirs and i'm going to go ahead and add this so you can see how that works as well even though it has nothing to do with egypt um, a memory test, you can make your own memory test, you know, flip the cards, um, you can make your own quiz, you can make your own matching pairs test. And a time to climb is a quiz game where every answer they get brings them higher up the mountain. Um, you can have a collaborate board where you have an interactive, interactive class discussion. So say you're brainstorming for a story, okay? This, the kids can all add. So um, Egypt, I can't write. I can't write. Okay. Okay. So Egypt brainstorm. So this board here, um, you know, it's going to be, what do, you, what do you know about Egypt? And the kids can come on here and find, like, I'll show you how that works when we get into it. I'll just add it. But they can add things onto it. So, like, maybe it's a review for the end of the class. And it's probably going to tell me that I'm done here soon, but you can do a poll, you know, where you say like, would you like to go to Egypt? Okay. And this is the same thing. This is the same question that I asked before. Um, But there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. It's just a poll to see what people think. Okay. So we're going to pull into this. Are you guys ready? Are you guys going to pull in? Are you, are you guys going to like come do this with me? Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um, we're not going to do a flip it right now. Um, an open an open-ended question. This would be, these are all really, really good things. Well, the poll you could do at any point in time, but like the flip, the collaborate, and the open-ended discussion 
open-ended questions. Those are good for like, the collaborate's good for group work and the rest are good for like um, after class kind of stuff. So now you're doing this, you're saving it and exiting it. It's going to create your lesson. Where's my goat? Oh, there he is. Yeah, I have a... <laughs> Where's my baby goat? My baby goat's on the floor next to me. Okay. So what we're going to do now is this is my lesson. I can come in here and I can share it with other teachers. So uh, maybe you want to be able to edit this with other teachers. So maybe you're working with another teacher and you're like, hey, um, I'm doing this and I would love for you to be able to like play with me and do this with me or let's make a lesson together. Okay. Or, hey, uh, Sam, can I borrow your lesson on such and such a thing? Boom. Okay. So you can share it with teachers. And you can edit it at any point in time. So if you go back and you're like, eh, I'm not sure. I can rename it so it's easy for me to find. I can put the grades and all that, all that jazz in there. All right. But this is something that you could put like, so like Brenda, you're on here. I know you're on here. You have your lessons that you're doing and you have all of your slides. You could actually put your slides on Nearpod if you wanted to when you're teaching your private lessons and you could have your students do them on this app like this. Um, so now what we're going to do, okay, student paste. If you are watching the replay. Okay. The student boards are disabled right now for collabs. But if you are watching the replay, you can go into this right now. This is for the replay only. So you can click the Nearpod, go to join.nearpod.com and type in this code. If you are live, you can go into the app or go to join.nearpod.com and type in this code. Okay, I hope some of you will do this so that you can play with me and do it on your own because I would love to be able to show you how all this works. And uh, my live testers didn't come in today. So, <laughs> all right. So if anybody comes down, you'll get you'll be able to pick your own name when you come in and we can't see you on camera when you join. Just so you know, we cannot see you on camera. So you have complete autonomy. You can change your name to Cinderella and I have no idea who it is or what you're doing. Okay. So this is the first one. This is your 3D model. So you can drag it around. Wee! I'm having so much fun. Okay. You can drag it around and you can look at it. Uh, you can zoom in. Oh, not that far. Okay. There go. Oh, I zoomed in super far. You can zoom in. Maybe you're doing a drawing lesson and you want your students to be able to draw something. So, you know, I want you to copy the shadows, like really whatever, however you want to use a 3D model. If you just wanted to show it, you know, do you guys know what this is? Right? You can ask your students, do you know what this is? Okay. Do you know what country it's from? You know where it's from? Okay. Today we're going to be talking about da 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 Okay. So where's my, uh, and it's so little now. When you want to go to the next slide, Oh, and I can see someone's here. So hi, friends. So I can see my student list there. Okay, so um, you're able to do these on your own. So it's going to change for you. Now, we are, if you're live, you'll be able to do this. Or if you're watching the replay, you'll be able to do this. So go in and you can play around. And we are now in Egypt. I love using this. This is my favorite part about Nearpod. Um, I love using the Nearpod um, VR field trips because it's so cool for creative writing. I can tell the students, okay, I want you to write a descriptive paragraph explaining what it feels like to be here. Okay. So really think about it. Now they've got their, they can use their senses here, right? Think about it. What, what does the air feel like? Okay. What do you hear? So they can look around. What do you think you hear here? They're going to say, well, I hear people talking. It's going to help them become better writers because now they can use their other senses and they've got something to inspire them to do it with. Or you could say, okay, this is the setting of your story. Write me a story. I want you to uh, tell me the story, uh, you know, tell me a story, 
picking one of these people as the main character. So like this is the main character right here. And I want you to tell me what this main character is up to. What's his name? What's he doing here? And tell the story of, you know, John at the pyramids. You're going to get some really cool. This is why I love teaching writing because you have to, you can do so many cool things with it. <clears throat> so you're going to get some really, really cool, really cool um, creative stories that you get from this. So here we go. They could, you know, they can zoom in, they can zoom out. There's a lot of different cool things that you can do, but this is one of my favorite ones because it really just inspires their imagination and it's something different and it's fun. And if I let them pick where they want to go, they get even more excited. So now we're going to go to the next one. You can choose whether students can watch the video and answer at their own pace or the device plays on the teacher's screen. I'm going to go ahead and play it on my screen and um, we're just going to watch a little bit of it. Okay, so I can see this. The other students can't see this. So what do you know about mummification? So the students, when you put your answers in, it's going to show, and you can put silly answers in if you want to. So the students can now see what they, you know, we can actually see what the students know about mummification. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Nobody wants to type anything. All right, and that's okay. So we'll go to the next one. So if they succeeded in the passage. Okay. So who wrote the book of the dead? Okay. So this is going to tell you who had, how many people were correct and how many people were incorrect. So if you guys just want to, th those of you who are live, um, if you guys want to just pick a random answer here, you can just pick a random answer and it will show here, do it. Whoever's, whoever's on right now. Um, Pick a random answer and uh, it will show who's correct and who's not correct. And it will show, okay, there we go. So we have 100% are incorrect. So it'll, you know, it'll say like who, it, it, this gives you a chance to assess the students, but to add gameplay into it. So it's pretty cool. I really love that. You can also share the solution. So if you look at your computers now or your wherever you're at, whatever you're on, you can see that I gave you the answer. So now you know the answer. So here we go. There's another question that um, pops up on your screen and it is, would you like to visit Egypt? So you could say yes or no. There's no correct answer. There's no incorrect answer. Had I made an incorrect answer, it would, um, it would tell you that, you know, it would tell me incorrect, incorrect. But right now it says that nobody has shared the answers. Okay. Um, this is what it looks like on the student's end. So for, you know, you, I can show you. So say I am teaching class and I'm screen sharing and I don't want the students to be able to see all of the things. I'm doing it on students. So you, you can't. And half human voids Apep to reach the hall of Ma'at, goddess of truth and. Okay. So. Um, if I come over to student, they um, can't see the answers there. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Draw a pyramid. So now you guys can draw a pyramid. So I can actually see your drawings here. So if you guys want to, uh, Gary and Franz, if you, and anybody else wants to join in, you can go to join.nearpod.com and type in the code AFQIX. Beautiful. Good job, Fran, and good job, Gary. Oh, your pyramids are beautiful. So they act, they can actually draw here. So this would be something good. Like, again, if you wanted to say, okay, draw the letter A and the kids go on their iPod, their iPod, their um, iPad, and they draw the letter A with their finger. So this is a really cool tool that you can use to be able to uh, check to see where each student is. You can see how they're doing in class. You don't have to be screen sharing this. You can do it just like this. 
But like you've got Zoom up, you've got this up. You're not screen sharing this, but you're watching this and you're telling the kids what to do. And you're seeing them instead of instead of them doing it on a um, on a piece of paper. Remember, I showed you class pod. You can actually do writing activities where or not class pod. I'm sorry, book creator. You could do writing activities with your students and actually see how their writing progress is with Nearpod. You can do other activities and really be able to assess it as if you were in the classroom with them as opposed to uh, just kind of winging it. Right. So I love this. So you guys, you guys, congratulations. You drew some beautiful, beautiful pyramids. If I could give you a star right now, I would. The next one is going to be uh, fill in the blanks. So you can, I'm going to click the view answers here, but this is what it's going to look like. Um, they're going to have to drag the correct theirs to the correct place. So this is just a really good example of how you can do this, but maybe, um, you know, it, it, you could do it however you want to, but it's an interactive activity where they can drag and drop and figure out the correct answers. So, um, and then, and hi, Karina. So now we have three students. We have a new student that joined us today. Welcome to class. I'm so happy you're here. All right. Congratulations. If you guys are English teachers and you get this wrong, <laughs> I'm just saying, I may or may not judge you. Okay, good job. I don't have to judge anybody today. Okay. Of course, we're not all English teachers, but all right. So then the next one that we come in here, um, we've got the brainstorm here. So I'm going to pull up the instruction or leave the instructions here. Okay. So this is a board. This is a collaboration board. So I might want to say, okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to uh, tell me what you learned about Egypt. Show me some things that mean, like that uh, speak, like that are Egyptian to you, right? So, um, you know, I put in Egypt, I should capitalize that. I can add images, okay? So maybe I've got images. Um, so I can add the pyramids of Egypt search and I can add the pyramids to this board. So this is going, this is just a collaboration. Like, what do you know about it? You could use this for, uh, use your imagination however you want to use it. There's a lot of sand. <laughs> Good job, friends. Yes, there's a lot of sand. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and I can give you hearts. Okay. Very good. Very good. Gary says ancient Egypt has a history of over 4,000 years. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm like putting my, um, I'm putting my kid voice on with you guys here, but this is just kind of cool because you can check their understanding. You can, it's kind of like, um, is anybody here? Let me know in the comments. Is anybody here a classroom teacher? Like you teach in the classroom or you have not taught. Oh, I saw Karina just came in here. If you want to be in class, you could be in class too. But we're like already done with it, so it doesn't matter. Um, you don't have your camera on anyways. Okay. Um, does anybody, uh, uh, da, 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 da. what was I going to say? Oh, is anybody a classroom teacher? Do you have classroom experience or not? So if you have classroom experience, one of the things that they teach you uh, to do in an, at a classroom is entrance and exit tickets, our entrance and exit tickets. So this would be a really cool way to like warm up or close the day out. So maybe you want to say, okay, we're going to learn about Egypt today. Um, can everybody just let me know here on the board? Tell me what are some things that you already know about Egypt, right? So you could do this as the, what I know, what I want to know, um, what I learned, you could do it kind of like that. But, um, you know, and then at the end of class, you can make another board that says, what are some of the um, student options? Students can see names. I'm going to put that on. Students can edit responses, approve student posts. Okay. I'm going to turn that off. I'm not going to do that. But you could have the students go through and... Um, say some of the things that they learned or some of the things that they know 
And this is just a cool way to increase engagement and comprehension. All right, so here we go. Here's another, if you're on here live, um, you can type in that code and you can put it in here. Would you like to go to Egypt? Yes, no, I don't know. If you're not on the iPad or you wanna see, this is what it looks like for the students. So, so we have 66.7%, 100% of students said yes, we'd like to go to Egypt. All right, so I have success, successfully um, convinced you all to go to Egypt. But I just wanted to show you that instead of just like showing you a video of it, I wanted to like really walk you through and give you a chance to participate because it's a really, really cool tool. And uh, let me know in the comments too, what ways would you use Nearpod? I added this extension to use with my Google Slides, but I have yet to try it out. I've never used the Nearpod extension, so I've never used that. So I don't know. Um, and I see that Gugu said hi. Hi. So yeah, so there are different things that you could do with it. It's a really, really cool thing. Um, I don't think I don't think that there's anything. Um, here, I'll go back and I'll show, you, show it to you again. If you want to poke around, you can poke around. Um, so uh, I'm going to end the lesson. If you want to go in and do it later and you want to check this out, you can do student paste. And this is your code. So if you'll just go into join.nearpod.com and type in this code. and um, I'll even let you guys, you know what? I will even give you guys an editable link. Okay. So if you guys want to go in and edit my, my thing there. Okay. This should show up. Um, let me just double check here. I can't share it to Facebook here. So I'm going to come in if you're on the Facebook. Oh, hold on a second. I'm going to come in. I'm going to share it on Facebook. Um, okay. Uh, come on. Okay. So if you're on Facebook, you want to go in there and you want to edit it and you want to play with it, you're more than welcome to go in there and edit and play with it. Um, just please be appropriate. So if you want to play with, you know, play with the slides that I just made and whatever, you can do that. So it is, it is a pretty cool, a pretty cool thing. I love it. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions about Nearpod or has anybody ever used it before? Yes, no, maybe, no. All right, we're, um, let's see. So Wednesday, just a heads up here. Wednesday, we're going to be going Wednesday and Thursday of this week. We are going to be going live on, um, on YouTube and Wednesday we have a uh, another curriculum that we're going to look at and Thursday we have a um, an ADHD coach that's coming on so if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel and if you're watching this on um, on Facebook it's the online teaching shenanigans Nearpod's free. Okay. Somebody said, I came in late. Is Nearpod subscription based? Nearpod is free. Everything that I just showed you is free. So you can go in and, you know, you can come in and say, okay, so say, okay, English learners, I want to use whatever Nearpod has for English learners, right? Well, I can't. It goes, it takes me to learn more and then it takes me to get in touch. And they're going to, oops, and they're going to tell me um, what I have to, what I have to pay. So I've never used it. So I've never done the paid stuff. Everything that I show you is free. Um, but, you know, there are different things. You can go right into the Nearpod library and you can search things too. If you're like, okay, is there anything in here? Um, Okay, I want to go into ELA. This requires a paid my on. What's this one? 
So, you know, you can come in here and you can search for things too um, under the Nearpod library and see if there's anything that you want to add to your lessons. So maybe I'm, you know, doing it. Oh, <laughs> I'd have to delete some lessons. I'd have to delete some lessons because I've got too many lessons in there. That happens to um, without a free one. So let me see here. I'll just show you what it looks like. So I'm previewing it. This is what the lesson looks like. Okay. So if you, if you were teaching this and you were, you wanted the kids to be able to do it on their own, you could play that. I would just explain it and read it to them if I was screen sharing. But these, you know, this is another thing that you can do is you can use the resources that are over here and find things. And I don't, it's, here, share this tab instead. Click on the cards, find the words that match. Right? So that's just one of the one of the lessons that I just randomly picked on so that you could um, you could see it here. Whoops, hold on a second. And I apologize. I'm um, I, I came into my bedroom here, so I moved into my bedroom because I'm rearranging my house. So I apologize that. I apologize for that. Okay. I'm going to share this again. So yeah, so this is just something that you can, you know, you can add different, go away. You can add different lessons in there. Um, you, you go in the library and you can check premium content is something you have to pay for. Um, and I don't have a premium account, so I would not do anything that was premium, but say I wanted to do um, English. Okay, here's English. And I can just go through and pick things that are relative to whatever I'm teaching. Okay. So here's a gamified quiz, um, MLA format. Oh, that looks like fun to teach. Setting a genre. So there's different lessons in here that you can add. And you wouldn't have to use Nearpod for all of your lessons either. You could just do it for, you know, whatever. Say you wanted to find an activity or just a lesson, um, words of the year for 2022. That's cool. You want to do a Queen Elizabeth one. Um, you want to find a video, you can click on that and you can, you know, just do a video. So you add that in here. So if you're teaching something and you want to add, um, say I am, okay, I'm going to do all their pod and say I'm teaching adjectives and I want to add, um, and I can't add it because I'd have to delete some things. But if I want to add things, I now have a slideshow for adjectives. Boom, let's get started. And it's going to have everything already built in. Okay, what is an adjective that you know, right? And so the kids can see my, this is like an entrance ticket. So what is an adjective that you know? And they're going to put this in there. So you could see how they do it. Isn't that kind of cool? I don't know who, they, who you are, but you said, wow, isn't that cool? There's so much that you can do with Nearpod. I absolutely love it. And then you go down here to teacher resources. And uh, if you want to learn more, you can attend webinars. You can um, learn, you know, you could, you could go to any of these webinars and learn some things about Nearpod. They're free. So if you wanted to learn about them. Um, they, you do get recording. So if you're like, oh, I want to learn how to use Nearpod, um, with Google, um, but I can't make it because I'm at my day job, you can still register for it and they'll send you the replay. There are how to videos. So if you get stuck doing it, you can, you know, you can do that. There's quick little, how we can help sections. Um, you know, there's different, there's just a bunch of different teacher resources there. They have getting started videos. 
they have a blog and then they have communities. So if you wanted to join their Facebook group, you could go to communities and go to join now and you could see how other teachers are joining. This is sounding salesy. I don't get paid anything to do this. I'm just showing it you because I'm just showing you because I like it. It is starting to sound salesy. If you're interested, yeah. But I just think it's a really, really cool tool. There's so much that you could do with it. You can switch your lessons up. A lot of times, um, what a lot of times I think what happens is students will get involved in something or you'll you'll start teaching the same thing, right? You're teaching the same thing all the time. And it can start to like wear the students down. They start to get bored. They're like, okay, like I'm used to this, right? That's why we like to add gamified things to it. So if you just want to come in and like, okay, we can't reward our students with a pizza party because we're not showing up to their house with pizza. We can't do that like we would in a brick and mortar school. However, you could say, if everybody brings in your homework, bring in your writing assignment, everybody send in your writing assignment by Wednesday or whoever uh, does whatever, like whatever reward system you wanna put in there, like a longer term reward. Then we will play a game. We will go on a field trip the kids like the field trips. Whenever I do the field trips, I'm like, okay, we're going on a field trip. Pack your bags. What do you have on your bags? Put on your backpacks. Get on the plane. Woo! And we kind of like go a little crazy with it. But um, we get there and then the, I don't know, the students just get so excited. It's just a 3D thing, but it's different. It's not the same thing they're used to looking to, looking forward to all the time. And it's one of my students' favorite things, even when they do not have control. So say they don't have a VPN and they can't access this, it's okay because they don't need to. I can just screen share the lesson for them. Say I'm doing, you know, say I'm doing the um, the field trip. I can just screen share it for them and tell, you know, it's also really good for English language learners because they have to use full sentences to tell me where they want to look if I'm controlling it. But yeah, I just thought I'd show that to you. It's free. It's cool. Um, and the link there, the link is there if you want to go in and practice or if you want to go in and change the lesson up, please be appropriate or I will shut it down. You are not children, you are teachers. So, um, but if you want to go in there and collaborate on the lesson and play around with it, if you want to um, play the lesson that has already been made, that's uh, available for you to do. Before I end this, does anybody want to see a baby goat? <laughs> You guys want to see a baby goat? This is like the craziest thing. I was out feeding the animals the other day. It was two degrees outside and I heard baby goats. And I did not have baby goats. So here is my baby goat. <laughs> it was two degrees outside. She has a brother. Her brother is in the barn. I love her. Her brother is in the barn. But... Um, she, it was so cold outside and you know, when babies are born, they're wet. So I got the blow dryer out and I was blow drying them, but babies have a really hard time regulating their temperature. And she was, um, not, if I would have just left her, she wouldn't have been breathing in the morning. She would have been gone. She was very, very close to being gone. So I brought her in the house and, um, now I am milking a goat so that I can feed her. And yeah. I'm not entirely sure what her name is. It might be Toasty, but we've had a lot of other suggestions. <laughs> Did I wake you up? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's so cute. My wife won't be around in five minutes. I don't know whose wife, whose, whose wife is, is somebody's wife coming over to take my goat? Like if you guys, if you guys want a goat, um, if anybody is close and they want a go, I do have a baby buckling. I will not be keeping her brother because um, you can't, um, if I have, I might, I might. If somebody really wants him, I'll, I'll let him go to a new home. But um, I might just turn him into a weather, which is so he can't breed. So he doesn't accidentally breathe his sister. Not to steal it, but to play with her. You're more than welcome to come around. Oh, are you cuddling? I love her. She's so cute. She's such a doll. And she's so little. She's a Nigerian dwarf for anybody that, you know, knows goats. And I can, she's actually smaller. You guys have seen my dog. She's actually smaller than my dog. 
not by much and not for long, but there's, she's smaller than my dog. Oh, is it, you got your buddy there? You guys want to get down and cuddle? Romeo is really funny because he's super protective and um, he doesn't, you guys got to see her. Okay. Don't judge. I'm going to show you my floor. Don't judge because I have paint on my floor because um, whoever painted this room is a terrible painter. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay. But where are we at here? Okay. So you guys, oh, where, where's your butt? Okay. You have to see this. Ready? Watch her tail. <laughs> They're literally, it's literally like a puppy. Just like a puppy. They wag their tail. <laughs> I absolutely 100% adore her. I think she's the cutest thing. I don't know where she went. Oh, she's right here. Look at him. Look at these little baby feet. She's like, mom, what are you doing? I'm not your mom. Your little floppy ears. Ah, I saved her. I'm so happy about that. But are you jealous? Do you want to get down? All right. I think I'm annoying both of my animals right now. But yeah, I can't wait. She's so cute. I can't wait to see her grow up. She's going to get little horns. She's going to get little horns up here. Yes. Okay. And a beard. They have beards too. The girls do too. All right. So if you have any questions about Nearpod and you're watching this, you're watching the replay and you managed to watch through the goat wagging its tail. Um, and am I, am I kidding you about what? About what? Am I kidding you about what? Um, yeah, feel free to comment and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, if you make a lesson and you want to share it with us to, you know, drop it in the comments. And if you want to share it as a preview to show off what you've made, or if you have something that you want to share with other teachers, go ahead and go into the Facebook group. Um, am I kidding you about what though? If you can come over and play with her. I don't know who said that. I guess it depends. If it's Brenda, you're a little far away. <laughs> All right. I know. I'm like, my students love it though. They're like, I, you know, I show them and they're like, what is that? Isn't a baby goat a kid? Goat kidding. Got it. Isn't a baby goat a kid? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is my kid down here. It's actually funny. I went into, so the same day she was born, my furnace. So now we're on story time. If you still want to stick around, we're just telling stories now. The same day she was born, my furnace died in my house. My gas furnace died. I was expecting it. It was installed in 1996. So I was expecting it to happen at some point in time. Um, but I just ran to, um, uh, so she was born. I have electric heat upstairs and gas downstairs. So I'm still like, got a couple electric heaters. We're fine. I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm not ready to replace the, the furnace now. So I'll just get like, how much more winter do we have to go? Hopefully not a lot. Um, the groundhog saw his shadow or whatever. So it's supposed to be ending soon, right? So um, I went to Tractor Supply to get her a goat bottle because I didn't have one. And then I went to Lowe's to get um, another heater. And I'm pushing her in the um, shopping cart at Lowe's. I got nowhere. <laughs> like it took me two hours to get this because every time I took two steps, I would have somebody over there wanting to see the goat. Like I was literally able to take two steps. So um, I was like, okay, well, I, I'm going to go grab, you know, I'm going to go grab something from my car really quick. I'll be right back. So I went to leave and the cashier was like, the cashier back in the appliances section, he was like, oh, um, you could just leave the goat with me if you want to, instead of bringing it back out in the cold. I'm like, okay. So I did that and came back and I just left. I was like, I really hope you tell your wife that some lady came into Lowe's and left her kid with you. <laughs> like, so, um, as far as it being a bad pun, I've already used that bad pun. Cute doggy. I stepped away for a bit. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> um, 
I don't know who it is. I don't know who I'm talking to. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to end this. I will see you guys all later. I hope you play with Nearpod. I hope you play with Nearpod. It is a free tool. We love free tools. Um, it's always cool to to get things for free. And um, there will be more free things. Oh, it's Chelsea. Okay. There will be more free things that I'm showing you next week, along with our ADHD coach that's coming on. So I'm really excited about both of these, these things. So um, I will see you guys all later on this week. Okay. And tomorrow I might be a little not here because I have an appointment. So just to give you a heads up, um, you probably will not get a response from me anywhere tomorrow because um, I'm going under anesthesia. So um, I cannot be held accountable for what I say. So I'm going to try to not be on social media. All right. Bye, guys.